Hello there, Whip here, and today I'm going to be showing you the Mine and Blade Battle Gear mod, which basically overhauls the weapon system in Minecraft to improve it a lot, and it also adds four new weapons as well. So you can mess around with those, and it improves the combat in Minecraft to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so the first feature that's to do with the weapon system is that you've actually got an extra six hotbar slots, and these hotbar slots are dedicated specifically to weaponry and shields, which are also added by the mod. And these shields actually allow you to block incoming damage from mobs, but I'll go into more detail with that later. So to actually switch to these extra inventory slots, you can press the R key, and this is fully rebindable in the controls menu of the mod, uh, which is kind of awesome. And yeah, and then you can just simply use your squirrel wheel to actually select different ones, or you can use one, two, or three, of course, to actually go back to your normal inventory slots. And then again, all you need to do is press R to go back to your special inventory slots. And to actually put items in these inventory slots, all you need to do is press E, or whatever your um, inventory key is, and then press the BG button up here, above this sigil, I don't know what that actually means, when I click it it does nothing, so just ignore that button. But here we've got the BG, like that, and I'm presuming that stands for Battle Gear, and then, then you can see we've got all these slots here, and of course you've got your normal armour slots for all your armour, you can put that in there, and if I take all the weapons out you can see we've actually got some outlined symbols here and this shows you what you can actually put in these inventory slots so on this side you can only put weapons like diamond swords and the new weapons added by this mod and in the right hand side you can put weapons and shields now I will um, say that there are restrictions to things you can put next to each other so you can dual wield a war axe and a dagger but you can't dual wield a dagger and a spear and I'm presuming this is because the spear requires a bit more um, precision and you can't actually dual wield with this because it's kind of hard to dual wield a dagger and a spear at the same time since spears are huge. So yeah, there are limitations to what weapons you can put together. But you can of course put all the shields and stuff in here. And I'm just going to, for example, put the um, dagger in there. So I can show you what it's like to dual wield stuff. So now I'm just going to show you how you can actually dual wield. So if you swap to your special inventory slots to dual wield, all you need to do is have your um, weapons in both slots at the bottom there, as you can see. And then to actually hit with your left weapon, um, which is on the left of the screen there, you have to have to actually hit your right mouse button. I know it's counterintuitive, really. I mean, you have to press the right mouse button to use the left weapon, but yep, that's what you have to do, like so. And then to actually use your um, right hand weapon, you just press the left mouse button, as you would normally would in Minecraft. And then you could just like do that consecutively, um, or at the same time, and you could do some like major killing <laughs> at the same time. Look how awesome that looks. Yeah, I'm killing stuff. Actually, what does it look like in? <laughs> look at that. Yeah. So in F5 mode, you can see it just looks crazy. I'm just spazzing out, hitting weapons rapidly after each other. And now I'm just going to show you what the shields looks like. So there we go. I've got my shield on my left. And if I just use a special ability key, which is actually the Z key, and again, this is rebindable, you could do a little push forward thing. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go into more detail with the shield later. I'm just giving you a demonstration of what it looks like in dual wielding mode. Wow, I look like a real Roman or something that's going to charge into battle do some serious damage to people but there you go so yeah that's how the dual wielding system works and the how you can actually use these extra inventory slots now I think I'm just going to show you how you can actually craft some of the new weapons and shields that this mod adds into Minecraft so the crafting recipes for the weapons are actually quite intuitive I mean they're easy to remember for the mace all you need to do is put four diamonds arranged like this and a stick in the bottom left corner and then for a dagger, you just put a diamond above a stick, so very simple crafting recipes. And again, these can be used with any resources you want, so you could use stone or uh, iron or something. I couldn't actually think of any items then, that was a bit peculiar. And then in the other chest, you can see to actually craft a war axe, you're just going to need four diamonds arranged like this with two sticks in the center of your crafting grid, going downwards. And then for a spear, it's actually a two-stage crafting recipe, although you can use this wood spear on its own. If you actually want to upgrade it, you can just put the wood spear along with a diamond in a diagonal pattern, to actually craft a diamond spear. So as you can see, they're quite easy crafting recipes to remember and shouldn't be too difficult for you to actually find out. And again, all of these do come in all different varieties as you'd expect with like normal swords. So you can have stone um, spears and stuff like that. So very nice. So next up, I'm gonna show you how you can actually craft the shields this mod adds. So to craft the basic wood shield, which has a one second block time, um, you're gonna need five wood planks arranged like this, um, which is a kind of like a star pattern or a plus pattern. And then for a hide shield, you're just going to need to replace four of those wood planks um, with um, some leather like that. And then if we go over to this one, we've got the even better um, shields. And these are a slightly different shape because they're more advanced and not circular. They've got like a special shape. 
And for these you're going to need to arrange iron like that with a wood plank in the centre. And you've probably noticed that all of these crafting recipes have a similar pattern to them. All you need to do is change the resource and keep the wood, wood plank in the centre. And then you just upgrade your shield. And at the top we've got the 5 second block of the diamond shield. So there you go, that's pretty much all the crafting recipes. Quite easy to remember and quite intuitive. So you should um, easily be able to craft this stuff. Oh, actually, there's something I forgot to mention about the dual wielding system, and it's actually quite a cool feature. So if you, if I actually go into F5 mode now, you can see I've actually got my last two selected weapons in my actual special weapons inventory displayed on the sides of my body. So if I swap back over to there, you can see they go in my hand, and if I press R again, they go and put on my sides, like they're ready to be used again. And then if I swap over to a different loadout, like the shield and the spear, if I then press R, you can see I've got my um, shield and um, my spear on my back like that. So it's like a back-mounted weapons for the last weapons you've actually used. And again, it works with all the weapons, so I could do that with the shield and the uh, war axe, and again... They're neatly displayed on my back, ready to be used as fast as possible, uh, which actually adds an element of realism, because you can easily access them. So next up we're going to be showing you the new abilities that the weapons in this mod add. So the first weapon I'm going to show you is the War Axe. Now you can make this of course out of any of the resources, so the attack damage that these do is going to differ based on the resources you use to make it. Um, but I'm just going to be showing off the diamond top tier War Axe and show you some of the abilities that entails. Um, so I'm going to start off by spawning a zombie. I was hoping to get an armoured zombie because that's what the ability of this thing is tailored towards. So let's just keep spawning zombies. I feel sorry for that villager in that house now. He's got like tons of... Come on, just give me an armoured zombie. Uh, Forget about it. I'll just I'll just do it with all these guys. Um, that's a lot of them. Oh, that poor villager. He's gonna get completely owned. Oh, poor thing. Anyway, I'm gonna go over to the diamond war axe now. Now, the actual ability of this diamond war axe is it has five attack damage. But if you use it to attack a mob with armor on, it's actually gonna do an extra um, plus one damage instead of less damage, like the diamond sword would. So whereas the diamond sword would probably do about five damage on a mob with um like iron armor on. The War Axe is actually going to do 6 damage, so it's going to be more efficient and better to use than the Diamond Sword in that case. And of course, the better the armour is, um, the more um, efficient this Diamond War Axe will be in comparison to a Diamond Sword. And this is why you'd use this over the Diamond Sword. Anyway, I'm just going to kill these zombies now. Loads of blood everywhere. Brilliant. Just kill all these guys. Save this poor villager's life. Well, wow, was that zombie just holding his friend's um, flesh? It's very, very nice, isn't it, really? I'm just going to leave some of these to show you the next weapon, actually. But there you go. You can see it's quite effective at ploughing through loads of zombies. So, yeah, that's the Diamond War Axe. Shame I couldn't actually show it on an armoured mob, but they seem to spawn really rarely. Uh, but the next one I'm going to show you is the Mace. And for this one, I think I'm going to spawn a skeleton down, because there's something about the skeleton I want to show you. Oh, we've actually got armour in this guy. Um, but he's got a quiver on his back, and this is as a result of the mod, um, because the weapons also have that, like, back um, tools feature. So he's just got a quiver on his back where his arrows are going to be stored, which is kind of a nice aesthetic touch, which is neat. Um, but anyway, the Mace has this ability called Daze, 20% um, Daze effect. And basically what this does is it applies a slowness effect to the mob. Um, a 20% chance of applying the slowness effect to a mob, I will say. And that's why it's 20%. So that time it didn't do it, that time it didn't do it, that time it didn't do it. And I ended up killing him. But basically, um, one in five. Let's try it again. We've got to do this. Wow, wow, that's a lot of armour. I mean, I couldn't um, do it with the zombies. But as soon as I go into skeletons, they seem to spawn with armour all the time. Um, but anyway, sometimes the... Um, mob you hit will get a slowness applied to them and they can't catch up with you as a result of that. And the base damage of a mace is plus 6, so very close to a diamond sword, so yeah, not much difference there. Um, but next up we've got the spear and this is quite an interesting one because this has extended reach. So for example I can hit these mobs from all the way over here. It's a bit peculiar but that's probably about a 5 block reach I think. Um, the normal Minecraft reach is 3 blocks. And yeah, I could just hit them from really far away so I don't have to get up close and have to worry about the contact damage. And with this you can just stand afar and watch them die. So yeah, that's the um, spear. And also this has another ability called um, plus three mounted damage. Which means if you're riding on horseback or pigback, I'm presuming it works um, when you're riding pigs, it does an extra three damage in addition to the plus six, well plus five base damage. So that means it was going to do eight damage if you're hitting mobs while on horseback. Which is kind of a neat feature because it makes you more likely to use horses as a method of transportation and while you're in fights. So next up we have the dagger, and the dagger actually has three different abilities. Let me just hover over them. So first up we've got the minus two reach, which basically means it has less reach um, distance. 
So normally in Minecraft you've got about three block reach um, for hitting mobs with your sword, um, but in this case you're only going to be able to hit mobs that are one or two blocks away. And then below that you've got the minus 50% attack speed, and this basically means that you've got a faster like, attack rate, so you can actually hit things faster in a row. So if I just swing, um, you can see that I can just hold down mouse, right mouse button, and it's going to constantly swing really fast, which is very good for getting loads of hits um, in quick succession off on mobs. So there we go. And the last ability of this dagger is the backstab ability, and this is probably the coolest. So if I just spawn down a zombie now, and then swap to my dagger, then walk up behind him, like so. Oh, I hit him with the wrong thing. Uh, there we are, backstab, backstab. Basically what this does is it doubles the damage, um, well the base damage of the dagger, um, every time you hit a mob in its back instead of its front, which is the backstab ability. So yeah, so by um, default the base damage of this dagger the diamond dagger is plus 5, so with the backstab ability, it's going to do plus 10 damage, which is very um, good when you're trying to defeat zombies, because it's only 2 or 3 hits. So next up, I'm going to be showing you the mechanics of the shields that this mod adds. So I've actually got the highest tier shield, which is the diamond shield, and I'm going to compare it to the lowest tier shield, which is the hide shield. Now these have a difference in block time, so for example the diamond shield has a 5 second block time, whereas the hide shield has only a 1.5 second block time. And I'm going to show you how this affects the actual um, mechanics of the shield. Um, so the bar just above my hotbar here, you can see that nice little blue bar, is the remaining time of block I've got. So when I block this is going to decrease, um, so to block what we need to do is press the right mouse button like this, because it's uh, equipped in the left slot of your um, weapons inventory. And there you can see the bar is decreasing, and then it actually recharges and goes up again, like so. And this is your cooldown period before you can actually block again. Um, now you can block even if the bar isn't full, so if I just decrease it now, um, it's depleted now, and when I go back up I can actually block when it's semi-cooled um, down, uh, but um, it's not very effective then because you don't have the longest block period to actually use it for. It's probably recommended to just wait until it falls to the top again, so you've got the full effects of your blocking ability. Um, but basically what block does is it blocks any incoming damage in an 120 degree arc in front of you. So if a mob happens to hit me from here or there, um, then it's going to block the damage. Um, it's going to block some of the damage, or in some cases it actually blocks all the damage. It just depends on the attack damage of the mob that's attacking you. Because of course if a silverfish is attacking you, um, then it's going to block all the damage of that. But if a zombie is attacking you, it's probably going to only block about 75% of the damage. Um, now because it only works in a 120 degree arc in front of you, if any mob sneaks up behind you and hits you, then it's going to do the same amount of damage as normal. Um, so in that case you'd probably be advised to turn around and block the damage like so. Uh, but yeah, that's how the blocking mechanics work. And if I just compare the speed of the bar depleting uh, from the diamond sword, I mean the diamond shield to the hide um, shield, you can see that with the hide shield the blocking bar decreases a lot faster than with the diamond shield. So yeah, you need to take that in mind if you've got a lower tier shield, you're not going to be able to block for as long. So next up I'm going to be showing you the second ability of the shield. So if I just spawn down a mob now, let's just spawn down a zombie. Of Oh, it's got armour. Anyway, if I swap and go to the shield now, and then do a shield bash by pressing the Z key, like that, you can see the mob is pushed away, like so. And when you actually use this special ability, it depletes some of your um, blocking bar. And of course, if I use it with the... Um, lower tier um, hide shield, it's going to decrease more of my blocking bar to actually do the attack. Um, so there we are. And as I've noticed so far, I don't think there's any difference in the actual distance that it knocks mobs back using this ability. Um, and I'm actually just using the Z key to do this, if you didn't um, know already. And wow, that did it twice in a row. You could just spam it and yeah, push mobs away. Um, so yeah, you've got to be careful when using this though, because it depletes your block bar. So when you've um, used too much of that, you're not going to be able to block and absorb the damage of any mobs that happen to be in other locations around you. But let's just um, try some and have some fun with this. And I'm just going to spawn down probably about like that many zombies. Wow, and they're all going for that poor little villager again. But anyway, if I just uh, swap over to my shield and then uh, use the special ability again. Uh, come on. Is it not working? Away! <laughs> yep, so we've got some of the mobs. I was hoping like that all the whole horde would just fly in the air, but no. It only appears to work on more, one mob at a time, which is a bit of a shame. But there, that's how you can use the shield bash ability. So next up I'm going to be showing the special abilities that these shields have, which is the shield bash, which pushes mobs away, um, which are close by you. And to actually activate this, all you need to do is press the Z key or whatever you've bound it to, and basically it just knocks mobs back. Now it only works one mob at a time, so I can hit that guy back, and then hit that guy back. And you can also notice it decreases my blocking um, bar, the time running of the block. 
So when you use this in quick succession a lot of times, you're not going to be able to block immediately after it, so I can just spam it now. But of course I can't block because I've got none of my blocking bar remaining, which is not very useful. So there we go. I'm kind of disappointed it doesn't work on massive hordes because I wanted to like, knock back all of these zombies at once and see them all flying in the air, but nope, it only works in one at once. So that's a bit of a shame, but that's how it works. Um, and yeah. And also, going back to the original blocking feature, I forgot to mention that while you're blocking, you cannot attack. Because when you actually try and attack, it cancels the block, and then returns the block once you've done the swing. Like so. So you can't attack while blocking, it doesn't seem to work. So, that's probably kind of realistic, because if you've got a massive shield in front of you, you're not going to be able to swing your sword, because it's going to be your shield in the way. Which makes logical sense, so there you go. And that pretty much sums it up for this mod. It just adds shields, weapons, and a new weapon system. And I'd actually probably say the coolest part of this mod isn't the new weapons. Um, it's the shields and the new weapon system, which enables you to um, mount two weapons at once and dual wield. I mean, that's just so cool when you're doing um, battles like that. You can just block um, incoming damage, the attack while they're um, dazed or something. If you're using the mace like I am at the moment, then you can block again to absorb the damage. You can turn around and block it. Um, arrow from a skeleton, which is kind of neat. Actually, let me just try something. I'm just going to go into survival now, and I'm going to spawn down. Uh, let me just swap back a skeleton, and then swap back um, to my shield mode, like that. So, let me just get hit once by this skeleton. You can see he's done half a heart damage, and now when I block, it did no damage. So you can see the block is actually absorbing some of the damage of the skeleton's hits, like so. And when I get hit normally, instantly I lose half a heart. And that pretty much sums up how the um, shield works. So yeah, thank you for watching. This is the Mine and Blade Battle Gear mod. And definitely give this mod a shot because it's brilliant. And I love the new aesthetic touches to the skeletons. Now just daze him now and stop him attacking me. Yep, he stopped moving now. And now we can quickly finish him off. So yeah, please remember to leave a like and I'll see you next mod video.